مباركم النكاح من سنتي ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاح مبارك نكاح مبارك زواج مبارك النكاح من سنتي ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاح مبارك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome everyone to a brand new series here with Peace TV titled Marriage and Divorce We will go through a few topics Hopefully we will cover the A to Z of marriage and divorce and possibly even see how we can fix a few of these issues that we find these days in society This is going to be a very interesting topic something that will hopefully benefit ourselves and everyone else watching inshallah with me here is Dr. Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad. He is currently based in the UK, mashallah. He's very well known and he's trying his best to increase the knowledge of the people. Sheikh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Would you please introduce yourself to the audience and tell us what you do and what your interests are? Okay, Bismillah ar Rahman Rahim. First of all, it is very embarrassing, Brother Daniel, to talk about myself. But uh, anyway, I was born in Saudi Arabia. I lived most of my life in Saudi Arabia. I studied with the big scholars in Saudi Arabia, including Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Ba'z, rahimahullah ta'ala, and uh, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Aqil. Sheikh Abdullah ibn Aqil, he was one of the judges. In fact, he spent more than 50 years as a judge in Saudi Arabia in various locations. I studied with him Hanbali Fiqh and Usul Al-Fiqh and I benefited from him regarding judgment. I also had my first degree in computer science and then after that I worked in quality management. During that time I was preparing for my BA in Islamic studies in Khartoum in Omdurman University in Sudan. And I was studying with the scholars of Saudi Arabia as I told you Alhamdulillah, I finished my degree in Omdurman University in Islamic Sharia and law as well, both. Then after that, I moved to the UK because I found that I want to progress more in da'wah. And I visited the UK before and I found that it is a very fertile land to give da'wah. So I moved to the UK. I started working for al muntada al-Islami there, a well-established big Islamic organization, well-established, being in da'wah for years. There I was the imam and the sheikh, the mufti, etc. During the very few years of my involvement in da'wah in the UK, I joined a body called the Islamic Sharia Council. The Islamic Sharia Council is a body that deals with the matrimonial issues in the UK and in Europe. And it acts like, you can say, a court, an Islamic court. We don't call it a court, and we might discuss this, but it deals with the matrimonial issues of Muslims in the UK and Europe, and some of those issues need judgment. In fact, many of them need judgment. So I am a member of the Islamic Sharia Council. You can say that I am a judge, one of the senior judges of the Islamic Sharia Council. And that gave me a very deep insight towards the matrimonial life of people in the West. And I started to understand more about the Western culture, the Islamic Western culture as well, and also started to be involved in dealing with matrimonial issues outside the UK, whether in Europe or even in other countries. Alhamdulillah, that provided me with a good experience about matrimonial issues in general with different cultures and hopefully in this program we will be able to highlight the cultural differences and the Islamic solutions regarding many cultural problems with regards to marriage and divorce. So as I said I joined the Islamic Sharia Council then after some time we founded an organization that aims to achieve two things to develop scholars who will deal with the problems of the Muslims living in the West. And those scholars that we aim to develop them are, you can say, homegrown scholars. 
And you know, Brother Daniel, that in the West, we were relying, or maybe before I came, the West was heavily relying on scholars coming from the East, from the Middle East, or from Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, etc., to deal with their problems. We said that there are issues with this scenario, and we said we need to develop the homegrown scholars because they understand the culture, they are more qualified to understand the culture, they are more qualified to deal with the problems of Western Muslims. So this is one of the main aims of this organization that we founded, Muslim Research and Development Foundation, MRDF. The second main aim is to provide solutions through studies, research, think tanks, through different media outlets to provide those solutions for the Muslims living in the West. And one of the main outlets to provide those solutions for Muslims living in the West is a website called www w.islam21c.com by the grace of Allah Jalla wa'ala islam21c.com became an independent organization separated from MRDF and alhamdulillah now you can say that I am in charge of islam21c or I am the main advisor of islam21c.com so I'm the main advisor of Islam 21C, also a senior judge of the Islamic Sharia Council. I am an advisor for a number of Islamic organizations in the West. I'm also involved in Islamic finance as well. This is one of my fields. Alhamdulillah, this might be enough no need to speak more about. Yani it's not good for the person to speak about himself. Finally, I would like to say that during my stay in the UK, I finished my PhD with Sawas. Sawas is one of the renowned universities in London. It is called School of Oriental and African Studies. Mm -hmm. I completed my PhD and the topic, it was mainly fiqh of minorities, but selected issues regarding the fiqh of minorities of Muslims in the West and Britain as an example. And in my PhD, I discussed many issues regarding marriage and divorce. MashaAllah, it's great to hear. I think for me, out of everything you just mentioned, the part that you being involved in the Sharia Council, which means to me that you actively deal on a day-to-day -day basis with issues that come up from the local people about marriage and divorce. Yes, yes, that is true. I also have the fatwa line and people do contact us regarding their problems and I can assure you that Statistically speaking, 70 to 75 percent, maybe three quarter, you can say 75 percent of the calls that come to us are regarding marriage and divorce. And I'm really extremely happy, wallahi, that, mashallah, Dr. Zakir Naik and Peace TV welcomed this idea to speak about marriage and divorce because it is such a huge problem in our community in our society, in fact, not within the Muslim community, in the society, and it is a big issue that we need to deal with it. And as we will see, even if I want to rush into the topic, you know, marriage is the cornerstone of a society, of a stable society. So if the marriage is not stable, if this kind of relationship is not stable, then the whole society will not be stable. So that's why we really need to discuss this issue deeply, thoroughly, in an academic way, but also, and maybe this is the format of this discussion, this is how I like it to be, not necessarily in a very academic way, but in a casual way, yeah. because most of these problems that we come across are related to the normal life, and people sometimes, they need a casual approach to their problems rather than an academic approach. And the academic approach is a very high level approach that might not touch the needs of human beings, let alone the simple person who might not have any academia background. I think these days a lot of theory is focused on, but the actual practical advice of how to solve problems is sometimes missing. Yes, that is absolutely true. Yeah. So in that case, what things do you 
planned for us to cover during, if you call it, the A to Z of, of marriage and divorce? Well, as you mentioned, it, it is A to Z to marriage and divorce. Mm. And by the way, we are not going to speak about marriage. We are going to speak about divorce heavily. Because, believe me, to fix your marriage, you need to know how to divorce. Yeah? In order to fix your marriage, you need to know how to divorce. I have delivered a course called Art of Divorce. I don't know, maybe it looks a funny title. Yeah? I even delivered it as a program. And people were surprised that it is called Art of Divorce. And when they heard it and they listened to it, they found that it is true. I have received some good feedback about it, that what helps you to keep your marriage is to know how to divorce. Mm. And in fact, if you don't know how to divorce, you might rush into a divorce quickly, which destroys your marriage. Right. And sometimes ignorance of the right procedure of divorce might put the person into predicament. And after that, he might not be able to find solutions to reconcile with his wife. Because of what? Because of his ignorance of the correct procedure for divorce. So, inshallah, we'll try to cover everything about marriage and divorce. And maybe we can say that if we divide it into three main parts. Prayer to marriage or before marriage. Then during marriage. And then post-marriage or after marriage, how to end marriage and after marriage. Inshallah. Inshallah. Khair. Unfortunately, at the moment, we just need to take a quick break, but we'll come back straight after, inshallah, with something even more interesting, because um, so far it's just been mainly an introduction. So please come back and join us for the second half of the episode, inshallah. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the second part of the very first episode in a brand new series on Peace TV called Marriage and Divorce. In the first half of the episode, we briefly talked to Sheikh Haytham al-Haddad about his past, his background, what he's currently involved in, especially back in the United Kingdom. And after that, we briefly touched on the topic of marriage and what it actually means these days in society. So we'll continue, inshallah, Sheikh. What is marriage? Yeah, Jazakallah khair, brother Daniel. <laughs> Actually, I think you are touching on a very important issue now, which is what is marriage. I don't want to get into the technical definition of Islamic marriage. We will get into it, inshallah. But let me, as we are starting this series, let me emphasize that we are talking about Islamic marriage. And for maybe the vast majority of the audience, it is known that the Islamic marriage is a sacred relationship between two persons from the opposite gender, a male and a female. This is what we are talking about. Now, I am sure, Brother Daniel, that many of our audience might laugh. Why are we discussing this issue? They might say, wow, well, it's a waste of time. All of us need to know, and I'm sure many of our audience know this, that the definition of marriage has went through different stages, not in the West only, but in many non-Muslim countries. And I hope no Muslim country that has changed the definition of marriage in the UK. Their legislation in 2012 have changed the definition of marriage and marriage in the UK became a relationship that combines two persons even from the same gender. That's why I'm saying that we need to be careful of what we are talking about. We are talking about Islamic marriage. A male is marrying a female. We are not talking about the civil marriage. Mm -hmm. well, yeah? This could be a male and a male or Which a female. Which can be, female. yes. A male and a male, a female and a female. Two persons are from the same gender. And as this program, inshallah, is going to be heard in different countries, from different backgrounds, and maybe not only Muslims are going to watch it, maybe many non-Muslims from religious background, from non-religious background, they might watch this program. We want to make it clear that we are talking about Islamic marriage, which for many, even non-Muslims, 
who are still holding on family values, they define it as a relationship between a male and a female. They have not yet accepted the change in the definition, a male and a male. This is what we are talking about. But surely, Sheikh, just because family values are so important, and of course, within family values, marriage is probably the most important subject, that means that it significantly makes it more important that the marriage is more natural from the Islamic point of view in terms of marriage is for a man and a woman. Yes, definitely. See, there might be some legal issues here because some countries, including the UK, where I came from, when you talk about marriage, even Islamic marriage, and when you talk about that it is the natural kind of bond between a male and a female, this might raise the alarm or ring alarms in the media, in the tabloid media, even with some politicians, and they might even call you names, accuse you of extremism, of radicalization, etc., etc., because of this statement that you have said that the marriage is the natural or the organic relationship between two persons from the same gender. Mm -hmm. Yeah? However, we have to stress that it is the traditional way of having this kind of relationship. It is also the natural way of having this kind of relationship. Many people are trying to deny it and they say that many people, they are gays and they can naturally yeah, be attracted to a person from the same gender. We are not going to discuss these issues. We are discussing the Islamic marriage, which is traditionally the marriage between two persons from the opposite genders. Again, for most people still, they believe that it is the natural relationship between two persons, which means that those two persons will be from opposite genders. So here we are talking about the Islamic marriage. Yeah. In terms of the importance of marriage within society, where do you think it stands and how do you think we can preserve the traditional marriage if you like? Okay, now, first of all, let us talk about the traditional marriage from even a non-Islamic perspective. The traditional marriage from a non-Islamic perspective. Marriage is the cornerstone of a stable society. Mm -hmm. Many people have spoken about it. Many non-Muslims have confirmed this kind of relationship. Fukuyama spoke a lot about it, this famous American thinker, many other thinkers, even from China, from different backgrounds. They have spoken about this kind of sacred relationship between two persons from opposite gender where they have this kind of bond and they produce children. And this kind of relationship, it provides the societies and the individuals from certain needs that wouldn't be fulfilled or satisfied by any other kind of relationship. First of all, the cornerstone for a stable society that enjoys security. Why? Because this kind of relationship, the marriage relationship, prepares the individuals to be part of a network, to be part of a society. And by the way, this aspect of marriage has not been emphasized have not been mentioned or explained by many people. They think that the main aim of marriage is to fulfill the sexual needs. Mm -hmm. This is true, but there are some other important effects of marriage, such as preparing the person to be an individual who is part of a bigger network or a bigger community. So it breaks the individualism within individuals. So making sure that the foundation of society, which marriage plays a big part of needs to be strong without a shadow of a doubt but the first element of a strong society is that the individuals of that society are ready to be part of a society now to be ready to be part of a society this needs to be nourished with the person from a very young age mm -hmm. so when the child feels that there is a mom and dad they live in this kind of sacred relationship there is a family, there is a small community, and 
in fact there is a small country within his house where the top leader is the father and the subjects of that community are the children and the mother the father serves something and the mother compliments that the mother serves something and the father compliments that as well the children listen to both of them and they develop yeah the children will feel that they are looked after and they will look after other people as well they will see the father sacrificing for them they will see the mother sacrificing for them they will see a kind of love between mother and father they will feel that if there is an issue between them then things have to be solved amicably otherwise things will progress and will be out of hand they will see the care between their mom and dad is a very important element of happiness and stability they will see that care is not just the emotional care care includes the emotional side the physical side the financial side it includes a number of things so they will live as a small country in their family and that's why the family is the foundation of any stable society and by the way many western thinkers have spoken out about the biggest problem of western societies we are talking about of course liberal non-islamic contemporary western societies we are not talking about traditional western societies and they say that the biggest problem western societies are suffering from is marriage breakdown by the way they spoke about marriage breakdown they were talking about traditional marriage and that's why here it is very important to highlight that apart from the definition of marriage that has been changed recently by many western societies we need to remember another important change in terms of the nature of marriage marriage in many western societies and the audience have to be clear about what we are talking about here it became just a legal kind of relationship between two persons or between husband and wife a legal relationship rather than a matrimonial family based relationship Sheikh, this is a perfect time to end the episode unfortunately we have run out of time but we do hope that the audience do come back and join us for the second episode of this new series marriage and divorce we have just finished covering what marriage is and how important family values are including islamic marriage and traditional marriage inshallah please come back and join us assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh مبارك زواج مبارك النكاح من سنة ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاح مبارك there is joy there is happiness in this union let there always be bliss Allah will bless your home with light your heart with never ending delight two worlds today have now become one the road ahead is as bright as the sun oh Allah keep this marriage so strong in your hands does the future belong be